Muchas gracias, misionero Miguel Bermúdez Thank you very much, misionero Miguel Bermúdez Marín. Muy buenos días. Good morning. A todos los presentes. To everyone present and to those that are seeing us through the satellite Amazonas or through the internet in the different countries. Y acá los que nos and also for those that are visiting us and also for the local ones and also special greetings to the Reverend Tirso Jamiro Hidon Pinzon and his wife May whom are having an anniversary number 50th let us give them a strong applause of congratulation and may God bless them greatly and keep them united unto the transformation and take many greetings there to Guatemala and also to the Reverend Jose Hernandez who is with us may God bless him greatly and also everyone who is visiting us from the different countries take greetings from here from Puerto Rico in Malachi chapter 4 verse 1 and on which is a scripture he used the, uh, here in this message that we will be seeing and hearing the mystery of the harvest preached on in 1997 in Sao Paulo, Brazil it says, Malachi chapter 4, verse 1, For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, Say the Lord of hosts, that he shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name, and there he draws a pyramid and the ages and an arrow toward the cornerstone shall the son of righteousness arise with healings in his wings and he writes redemption transformation and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall and ye shall tread down the wicked for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this saith the Lord of hosts remember ye the law of Moses and serve my servant which I commanded unto him in horror for all Israel with the statutes and judgment you may please be seated he tells us in the message pastors knowing the time and watching at the last day preach on 15, this September 15th of 2008 in San Luis Potosí, Mexico it says in Malachi chapter 4 verse 2 says but unto them that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healings in its wings and in the book of the ages on page 60 the book edited of the ages he tells us this is the new Jerusalem he writes the bride the lamb will be in that city and because of his presence there shall be no need of light the sun won't rise and shine there for he is the sun and the light thereof himself there he writes that day the eighth day equals eternal the nations that come into it will walk in his light aren't you happy 
that day is upon us, John saw that day coming. Even so, Lord Jesus, come quickly. He writes, the sun on the other side of the sun, the eighth day. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yeah, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble, and the day that cometh shall burn them up. Say the Lord of hosts, that he shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name, and he says, on the west, shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. He writes, Elijah and Moses beside him, and with healing in his wings. And his wings, he also writes, Moses and Elijah. And ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall, and ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. In the day that I shall do this, say the Lord of hosts. There it is again. He writes the sun. The sun shining out in all of its strength. Or the strength of the Son of God shining in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. There he stands, the judge, the one who suffered and died for us. He took the wrath of divine judgment upon himself. He tread the winepress of the fierceness of wrath of God alone, as we have already stated, to the sinner his voice is as the sound of the cataract or the surf pounding in waves of death upon the rocky shores. But to the saint, his voice is as the sound of the sweetly singing brook as you lie at rest, satisfied in Christ, shining upon us with his warming rays of love. And he writes, love divine, he says, fear not. I am he which was, which is, which is to come. I am the Almighty. Beside me there is no other. I am the Alpha and Omega, the all of it. And he writes, the all of it. And he draws a star of David. He is the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He is the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. Yes, he writes, of ten thousand, he, he writes, preachers, he is the fair, fairest of ten thousand to my soul. Yes, that great day, he wrote, eighth day, and dispensation of the kingdom, is ready to break, and the son of righteousness will arise with healing in his wings. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand, and he wrote down power upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first. And there he writes, Jesus. And the last. And there he writes, Moses and Elijah. And I'm the, he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and of death. And he writes the keys. Now, our brother William continues to say here, his wings are the two olive trees, the two candlesticks of gold, the ministries of Moses and Elijah, and Christ is the Son, the Messiah shall bring healing in his wings, that is redemption to redeem Israel as a nation, restoring the lost tribe, restoring the kingdom of David, uniting the kingdoms of the north with the kingdoms of the south, and shall bring salvation in his wing, redemption. Here it says, as the soul he should come forth, as he shall come to us as the rain, as the latter and former rain. In clear words, they first, they will first hear and believe the latter rain as the latter and former rain. That is that, for that, the ministries of Moses and Elijah will have the divine revelation of the gospel of the kingdom, of the gospel of the grace. Therefore, 
They will move among Christianity and Judaism. And just as the Jews brought the gospel to the Gentiles, the gospel of the grace, the Gentiles will take it back to the Jews. They will return it to the Jews. That is there in the book of the ages. On page 30, It says, Now, when will the gospel return to the Jews? When the day of the Gentiles have ended. The gospel is ready to return to the Jews. Oh, if I could only tell you something that is about to happen today, this great, this our great day. And he writes the Gentile day. This great thing that is about to happen will carry over to Revelation 11 and pick up those two witnesses, those two prophets, Moses and Elijah, turning the gospel back to the Jews. We're ready for it. Everything is in order. As the Jews brought the, mess the message to the Gentiles, even so the Gentiles will take it, and he writes Moses and Elijah, will take it right back to the Jews. And the rapture will come. And he writes, Moses and Elijah also be cited. Moses and Elijah, the rapture. He goes on to say, through the ministry of the two olive trees, the ministry of Moses and Elijah, which are the ministries that have to do with the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom for the Hebrew people, Therefore, they will come forth from Christianity to Judaism with the gospel of the kingdom. And then on, they will explain to them what the gospel of the grace was for Christianity. He says, He shall come to us as the rain, as the former and latter rain to the earth. And if any rain is going to come, from, it's got to the cloud has to rise from somewhere. When they see the cloud ascending, rising from the east, the east is the land of Israel, the Middle East. They're in the east. If you look toward east from the planet Earth, you're looking toward the territory of Israel, to that area over there. But if you look from there to the west, then you're looking toward the American continent. You're looking upon the Latin American people. There, for the northern part, he already had his seventh age. God already did his work with them. Now it is for the part of Latin America. And when they see the cloud, the cloud that will have that latter and former rain, remember that the scripture tells us that there are people whom are clouds without water and there are others that are cloud with water. In the message, The, which is the attraction on the mountain it tells us also in the message of the Feast of the Trumpets where we read on Friday a part of page 39 of the book in Spanish where it tells us he tells us but he said that the, at the evening time the, the clouds will move away and the denominations will vanish the gospel itself, the word itself, made flesh. And there he writes, clouds equals denominations without water, without word. That is without word. And he writes, denominations without water, without word. Water represents the word. In the message, which is the attraction on the mountain, on page 22 of the book in Spanish, 
He says, just look at the scriptures. The Son of Man, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever, grow it past denominations, grow it into the top of the three. What did he say in John 14 or 15? Every branch that is in me that doesn't bring forth the fruit, it will be cut off and pruned, thrown into the fire and burned. But every branch that will bring forth fruit, it will be purged. Oh, there will be a true former and latter rain in the last days upon that little group. And there he draws a pyramid on top of it that comes with him. And he writes, Jesus, Moses, and Elijah on that little donkey, low and humble, nor or denomination crying, Hosanna to the king that comes in the name of the Lord. What's the matter today? What's the attraction on the mount? And there he writes, church. Our brother William goes on to say, but when we see that cloud with water that rises from the west, in the, that ministry that the Holy Spirit will be operating at the last day, those ministries of the two olive trees, when you see that cloud rising from the west, remember, rain is coming. Rain is coming to the Hebrew people. A great rain sound. All those will be able to say when they see that cloud rising in its ministry in the west. And also says that he comes, he shall rise as the sun of righteousness. And the sun that rises in the east, where does it come from? First is in the west. In the evening time, it is in the west. To return to the east. In the message. The messenger, the evening messenger, <coughs> he tells us on page 12, on this message it says, now, the sun itself that shines, that rises in the e east, is the sun, same sun that uh, sets in the west. Now, let's, he writes, the same sun of the east, the, sa the sun of the east is the same sun of the west. Christ in America, in Holy Spirit, in the west. Let's just stop a minute and background this message. We know that the sun, the sun, the solar system, but the sun, that is sun, the solar system, but the sun, son of God, came down in the brilliance of God and the light of God in the east. And we've had 2,000 years now considered by the Lord, he said, It'll be a time that wouldn't be day nor night. Just kind of a dismal day. But in the evening, but in the evening time, it shall be light. Now, if you notice, the Holy Spirit fell on the Eastern people first. Then we've had a time of just church joining and little ends to be picked up and little cause to be fought for. But then, in the evening time, on the Western Hemisphere, it shall be light. And we're at that time now. Civilization come light, come like a great rift from the east, picking up sin all the time as it come. And she's hit the west coast like a sound barrier, and she's falling back. And the most corruptible place that I know of, it, of is on the western coast. Anything that you want to think, Think of, they got it, sin, corruption, divorce, marrying, Hollywood, the very whole of hell, that's exactly right. And there he writes, there will be light in the West, that is America.
and he also write Hollywood the opening Hollywood equals the opening of hell or Hollywood the opening of hell he goes on to say but when we see that cloud with water rising from the west under that ministry that the Holy Spirit will be operating at the last day those ministry of the two olive trees when you see that cloud rising from the west remember a rain is coming so notice the typology and symbols which are used in the Bible notice how simple they are it's because God applies his own math his own program to nature to his church to all his program you will then see and understand why Jesus himself used parables the prophets also use parables because the first Bible is zodiac up in the sky and notice God says to Abraham look upon the sky look upon the stars count them if you can he couldn't count them that is how your descendants shall be therefore when one is looking upon the stars one is seeing the representation of the seed of Abraham on the stars and consequently when one see the morning star is seeing the representation of the Messiah and when one see the sun it is also the representation of the Messiah of God because to those that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in its wings in other words the Messiah shall rise that is the Messiah shall appear for Israel in the message the light of a new millennial day preached on March 1st of 2001 in Cartagena, Colombia our brother William tells us and now for the last day we have the promise that God will turn on the light of the last day the light of the age of the cornerstone for which Christ, the angel of the covenant, the Holy Spirit, who is manifested because he is the one that turns on the light. And he must have a man on earth that has to be his angel messenger to turn on the light of the last day to his church in the age of the cornerstone. And that light, and that is the light of the last day. That is the light of a new millennial day, of a new dispensational day, and of a new age day. In a new day of the age of the cornerstone, new millennial day, new day of the seventh millennium, and new dispensational day. In other words, new day of the dispensation of the kingdom. In the message, turn on the light, or light up the light, the Reverend William Branham tells us on page 5 and then watch until a while the majesty of the sun come, began to move upon darkness and when he did that separated darkness from the light and pressed the darkness back finally she raised to her highest up over the top of, mount, of the mountain and it showed superstition just what it was it lit up and showed what it was and all the spooks and fears that I had of the superstition when the sun was shining in its power upon it all fled away the sun is the king of all lights on this earth in the natural light no matter how much artificial light that we can have and how many great electric rays we can produce when that sun rises all the rest of them dim out that's the same thing it is with the word of God when the word of God rises all superstition denominational fanatisms and things spread away and it shows it just exactly what it is he goes on to say and now 
the light always rises in the morning. And those that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise and shall bring healing in its wings. And now we can see that the light of a new day is shining in the top part of the mystical body of Christ, that is in the age of the cornerstone. And it is beginning to shine to enlighten our soul, our spirit, our mind, all of our being, our understanding, to be able to understand all these things which will shortly come to pass at this end time. So that, in this way, our hope is not placed in man, in politics or nation, but rather in Jesus Christ, our Savior. In the message, the only voice of God, preached on February 4th of 2002 in Cali, Colombia, he said, Christ is the Son of Righteousness. Therefore, the church is no longer under the stages of the moon. Therefore, she is not dressed with the moon. The church is no longer represented in the moon but she is dressed of the sun, where she receives the light of the sun, so that the wheat, the sons and daughters of God, whom are there in that age, can ripen in the knowledge of God, and can be transformed and taken with Christ to the marriage supper of the Lamb. It is through the creative word, the only voice of God, that, that He gives us His light, His warmth, to mature in the divine knowledge and to be harvested in this end time. In the message, the anointed ones of the last days he tells us Also in the message, uh, the one in the book of quotations of the message, the restoration of the church bride, the church bride three. Let us read here in the book of quotations, in the message, the restoration of the bride three, on page 69, paragraph 593, it says, A light shall come. He shall rise. Where will it come? There in Jerusalem? No. No, sir. Evening lights will not rise in Jerusalem. The evening lights goes where? In the west. They had, they had their day and refused it. But the evening light shall rise in the west. What for? To shine upon the word. What? To ripen the fruit. Bring forth the bride three with the same signs, wonders and fruits that they had at the beginning. And there he writes, The sun shall ripe the grain in the west. The light in the west, he also wrote there. And he also made a pyramid and the ages and an arrow toward there and he says, the sun west. He goes on to say, that is why it's so important to be hearing the voice of God, the only voice, the voice of God through the angel of the Lord. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, speaking from age to age, through the messenger of each age. And at the last day, the promise is that He will be giving us and making known to us all these things which should happen soon. And this is through His angel messenger. In the message, what happens at the final trumpet, preached on October 4th of 2008 in Cali, Colombia, it says,
And we must have also memory of the experience they had on Mount Transfiguration, which was a vision where Moses and Elijah appeared speaking with them, speaking with Jesus, which comes to be a type also, type and figure, of what the coming of the Lord will be at the last day. Therefore, the Reverend William Branham, when he was forerunning the coming of the Lord, he had to forerun it as it was seen on Mount Transfiguration. Jesus with Moses and Elijah. And Jesus shining, his countenance shining as the sun. For those that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise and shall bring healing in its wings. In the message, the evangelism of the end time on page time. He tells us, Now the sun rises in the east. He writes Israel and sits on the west. And he, make, he writes America. It doesn't change. It's the same sun. Now when the Holy Spirit came, Jesus, the Son of God, He come in the east, on the eastern people. It's been a day, three uh, dots. It's traveled. As civilization has traveled with the sun, coming from the east to the west. And now we're at the west coast. We go any further, we're back east. So, well, everything den denotates His coming. We're at the end of time. Everything shows that it's all over. And he writes, the Son of the East equals the coming of the Lord with Moses and Elisha. And he also draws the Star of David there. And in the message, the only place on page 2 of the message God's only provided place of worship he tells us now I was getting old and I thought will there be another revival will I see another revival and just remember from the west and he wrote America a rider will come on a white horse. We shall ride this trail again. And he writes, 50 Laja with second Moses. That's right. Soon as we get ready, it's a promise. And he writes, Latin America And he writes, and the Western means Moses will come upon the, and the Western islands, and he writes, Moses will come on the pure word. Our brother William continues to say here in this message, his wings, the ministry of the two olive trees, one on each side. Like in the tabernacle upon the Ark of the Covenant was two caravans of gold, one on each side, and the presence of God upon the mercy seat. And they were also in the temple that Solomon built. They had two wood caravans made of, giant ones made of wood. The olive wood showing humanity and showing the, those ministries and the gold showing the divinity there. God operating those ministries. In the message, the rising of the Son of Justice or Righteousness, preached on July 12, 1991, here in Calle, Puerto Rico, it says, now, among the Gentiles, there will be a solar eclipse spiritually. There will be a, 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 a solar eclipse of the Son of Righteousness. For the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ as the Lion of, of, the, li of the tribe of Judah, as King of Kings in the end time, according to the divine promises, 
will try to eclipse Try, will try to be eclipsed by the moon. The moon represents the churches. Just as back then in the first coming, they tried and they thought that they made an eclipse. The churches back then, the Sanhedrin Council and all of them, they tried to make an eclipse upon the first coming of Christ. And they thought that they had won by crucifying him. And it was the greatest defeat that the devil had there. But notice how all of this will be repeated again. She will be, try to be an, uh, eclipsed by the moon. So, because the moon has both seas, the wheat and the tares, by the tares, it will be that they will try, that is, the tares will try to make an eclipse upon the second coming of the Lord as the lion of the tribe of Judah. In a message, he said to us, He also told us in the message the Spirit of God and the Spirit of the Antichrist preached May 8th of 2011 here in Calle Puerto Rico, it says, Jesus Christ knew who he was from the beginning. On one occasion, it says, he said who was going to uh, give him up. In one occasion, he says, I did not choose all 12 of you, and one of you is evil. And he did not point him out at that time. He left him alone. Did not bring him out or said, I'm going to take this one out, so he gives me no problem. A stage was going to come, that is, he was a time with him, but then later on, when he sent them, he said, what, what you have to do, go and do it. And a stage is going to come where he had to die and had to fulfill certain things, where some of them were going to reveal against Jesus, was going to give him up, was going to sell him, and so on. He was typified, and when they sold Joseph, his brothers, the, his brothers sold Joseph. So it will be from the same nation, from the same people. And now Christ left him because he knew that he had a part that he had to carry out. What if John or Peter tells him, but if you know who he is, get rid of him? Well, Jesus could ask him, then, do you want to take his place? Do you want to do the part that he's going to carry out? For sure, Peter would say, no, not me. Well, leave him alone. He has a part to carry out so that the work of redemption can be carried out. The one I have to carry out. That is that to, to uh, carry out the work of the claiming work Things have to happen in that same way. In clearer words, what he's interested is in the money. Let him do his part. But Christ stayed shut. He never said anything so that no, no problems would arise among the disciples. Because they were very jealous and they could harm him. And also, in the book in November, there we read a portion of the message, the Spirit of God and the Spirit of the Antichrist. That is on page 201 of the book of November, part 1. It says, which was preached on May 8th of 2011. This is this message. It says, that is why is that the Reverend William Branham says that 
when the third pool is manifested, where the power of God, which was seen manifested through him, partly, in part, will be manifested in all of its fullness. And it says that this will give the faith to the believers in Christ for the rapture, will give them faith to be changed and raptured and taken with Christ to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And as a sign of the time in which this is going to be fulfilled, it says that a squeeze is going to come upon the believers in Christ, upon those that are going to enjoy the blessings first, will a squeeze come for the enemy of God have never want for the children of God the elect of God receive the blessing they always try to he always try to find the devil and his instrument always try to find a way to hinder the divine program therefore when you see a squeeze moving and that is also directed against that vision of the tent that is an attack is going to come against the great tent cathedral of those that are leading the great tent cathedral and the ministry of the great tent cathedral I'm telling you so that you are up to date ready because everything is fulfilled parallel to what happened in the first coming Remember, when that is happening, remember, the full manifestation of God is very near. The adoption is near for the sons and daughters of God. That is, all of that will be happening before the adoption. And for sure you are all getting ready because you are these are people like Judas and since now they must be getting ready because they are people like Judas predestinated since before the foundation of the world and as he says there leave them alone because they are many that are jealous and may do something that is not convenient like Peter when he draw his sword and cut some, someone's ear to the soldier what did Jesus do? do? he put it back it's not with armies or with strength but with the Spirit of God, which will be, up the, which, that's how the victory will be obtained. Therefore, we will be on the side of what God promised, working in favor of the project God promised to carry out at this end time. We are not going to be on the side of those that will be against, because then we will be in the position of everyone who rose against the program of God at all times. And you will say, if I would have been in the time of Moses, I would have believed in Moses. Well, notice, look at what you're doing today. The same thing you're doing today is the same thing that you would have done in the time of Moses. It would have been of those that, if you would have believed, you would be hand on hand with Moses. And if you ha are against it, then you are represented in that and Korah and Abiram. In the message, warning before the judgment and why little Bethlehem let us go to why little Bethlehem on page 2 why little Bethlehem on page 2 even nature, I want to speak about him. And nature is a great testimony in other way. That is, we cannot have the, this resurrection life unless it serves God's purpose. Now, if a seed is planted and that seed is germinized, it will bring forth a new flower. But if it isn't germinized, it will not bring forth a new flower if it doesn't serve God's purpose. Yet, not just because it's a flower, it rises. No, not all those born again would 
do the rapture. Because it served God's purpose. God's purpose. Now notice that Judah has his name written in the book of life. But for what he did, his name was blotted out. Even though he came back with repentance, there was no place for it. Like there will be no time for repentance for those that will be against the vision of the tent. That's the reason the sun rises. It's because it serves God's purpose. And we rise when we serve God's purpose. I believe that Brother William served God's purpose in life. A real father. And I see his darling companion, Miss William, sitting here. And he writes, who doesn't serve the purpose of God shall not rise to eternal life. That is, his name will be blotted out from the book of life and will not have eternal life. And there he writes, the sun, the morning sun, to testify to another generation, to another age, to another dispensation, to another people, to another nation, to another people. And I see his darling companion, Mrs. William, sitting here. That brother had departed. A real husband. That's one of God's purposes. A father, one of God's purposes, and he was germinized to God by the Holy Spirit. God's main purpose. And he draws a star of David there. And in the message, Me, a warning, then the judgment, which is the subject that God never calls men to judgment without warning him. He says on page 23 of the message, God doesn't call man to judgment without first warning him. He says, a prophet proceeds the thing the things from afar away. He sees the cup of the wrath of God full before or before it's completely full. He say, He can say, thus say the Lord, God will destroy this city except you repent. Why? He's an eagle. He rides way in yonder, see? And he looks way off there and he sees that cup of wrath poured out. That's what the prophet looks at, looking at. He's not looking what is going on here. He's looking yonder. He's saying, it's coming. He can go so high till he can see that shade. He said, the world will be dark. Darkness and gross darkness. He's up high enough. The sun shining now. But he sees that shade coming. And he's saying, what he's looking at. It ain't here yet, but he'll sure be here. That's right. He's going to be here. Gross darkness upon the people. Remember the squeeze that is coming to the church. He knows it's coming. Years, years away, yet he sees it. He writes, the sun shining, then darkness, and... Gross darkness come. Amos, that anointed prophet of God, he saw the darkness and the judgment. He seen Syria come down with their chariots and sweep through there. Slaughter them people out. I went to page 24 of the book in Spanish. He saw it coming and the judgment of, of God upon them 50 years before it happened. But notice, 
that be by, by being a prophet, he was raised in the spirit and he saw it from far away. He saw the cup full before it was full. Like Abraham. God said to Abraham, your seed shall come to this country and shall remain here for a hundred years. And then I will bring them out with a strong hand. Because the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. See? God knew that cup was that cup was going to be full filled up. He was speaking with his prophet. He told him now, you see that cup of the Amorites down there? See? But their iniquity is not filled up yet. Abraham, don't say nothing about it. Hold on. But it will come. And with their cups filled up, and then 400 years, I'll drive them out like locusts before you. And I'll establish your seed here in this land. Amen. That's the prophet of the Lord. Now, when he speaks of his vision, whether it is wrath or whether or whether it is healing, he may linger, but it's got to come to pass if he speaks it in the name of the Lord. See, it might be a blessing that he speaks for you. He might tell you a certain thing and you can't see, at, see it at all. You say, how can it be? Why is it? He told me, thus saith the Lord. This is going to happen and that was going to happen and it, it, it didn't happen. The man is wrong. Now, you'll be judged for disbelieving it. But it's going to happen anyhow, see? It's got to happen. And he writes, You will be judged for not believing what a prophet says. Though it lingered, the Bible said, Yet will it speak in its season. It'll come to pass. The prophet's only looking off and seeing something. He's talking about what he's looking at. He's not thinking about here and what you look like now. He's looking with it. With it go, he's looking what it's going to be. And when he speaks that, if it is in the word of the Lord, it's already been spoken. And there is nothing in the world can stop it. You see? That's right. Only God himself. Notice. Now we find that when he speaks his vision, the prophet does. Now, sometimes, I'm on page 25. Sometimes, he speaks good things. He speaks of his healing, of your healing. All right. You might think, it just can't happen. I haven't got any better. Then what does that do? That just brings the judgments of God upon you. That's right. Jesus promised to save you if you could believe it. If you don't believe it, it won't happen to you. You got to accept it. You've got to believe it. See? And you got to know from where it comes from that gives you faith in God or your prophet. See? You got to believe it. And there he writes, if the prophet speaks to you a blessing and you do not believe it, then the judgment of God comes to you. But we want, desire the blessing. We desire the adoption and we are going to obtain it that promise will be fulfilled he goes on to say here in the message of the rising of the sun but the son of righteousness after that eclipse passes by it will come forth and shall shine and there will be a millennial kingdom on this earth and Christ, the Son of Righteousness, will be in His glorious millennial kingdom. And we with Him receiving the light of the Lord Jesus Christ during the millennial kingdom. And we will have light in all the aspects of the life of the human being. In the message, Christ revealed in His own word, on page 41, And the part of the next one it says, Now, let us read some of these scriptures here. Now, in the evening light, 
by the evening coming. Now we notice that it had to be the same light, and he writes 50 Lacha, that was in the morning, because there is no sun, one sun in the morning and another sun in the afternoon, it's the same sun, same sun that's in the afternoon, and he writes Lacha, is in the morning, the same in the morning as in the afternoon. Now, it said, the day itself, the day between that time will be kind of a like uh, like a dismal dark day, could not be called day or night in between that. See, that's the forming of the body from the feet, coming up, that is during the ages, and there he draws a cornerstone and the ages, and he writes the evening sun will be the one of the morning, and a star of David. When he was here on earth, he was the son, the likeness, and he writes the body of flesh. Then he was killed. The church took his place, the martyrdom, and went through the dark ages and began to build on the foundation coming out. Then where those the sight come from? At the top of the head. See that vision, Nebuchadnezzar? See him going down from the beginning of the Gentile age before the blood was shed for them and made an atonement. There were proselytes brought in, but notice it went right down, right down, right down to the bottom in symbol, see, brought it down. Then it started right back, coming back, the church come back from the feet coming up. Now it is in the head time, head time, and there he draws a cornerstone. Now notice the light. You can't see with your hands. Yet, it's part of your body. You can't see with your ears. Yet, it can hear. You can't see with the nose. Yet, it smells. You can't see with the lips. Though it speaks, see? That was Pentecostal age. But now, it's the eye time. The seeing, see? Now, there isn't one moving faculty beyond the eye. Is that right? The next is the intelli intelligence, which is Christ itself, who controls the whole body. No moving. He writes silence. No moving motion beyond that, see? Everything else has moved, see? Move your feet. Move your mus muscles in your legs. Move everything. Move your ears. Can move you, your nose, your lips, and so forth. But after your eyes, there is nothing moves. And he writes only silence. And he writes Revelation 8. There is nothing moves. That's why they claim that man get bald-headed quick. It's because, see, there is no exercise to de develop the muscles in the hair, the scalp, see? And it's not got a cushion that they can get blood up there. The blood won't pump through, see? Won't go up and furnish blood. Of course, the hair root lives by blood. And now, we find out that that part, you see, there is nothing beyond the eye. And he draws a pyramid and the ages and a star of David. And he writes, there is no blood in the age of the mind. Now, let us see. Now let's find out. It shall be light about the middle day, at the evening time. What is the light sent for? So you can see where you are. How to get around. Is that right? See where you are at. It shall be light about the evening time. Now we take that now and compare it over Malachi 4. He promised that there would be light come again in the evening time. See? 
For behold, I will send you the Elijah the prophet, and he will restore the children back to the fathers and the fathers to the children. Is that right? Lest I come, and he writes with Moses and Elijah, and smite the earth with a curse. He writes the plagues in the great tribulation. And he also writes, the days begin and end in the evening at sunset. And every dispensation, every dispensation ends in the evening and the new dispensation begins, begins in the evening. He goes on to say in the message, God put in his work today, preached 11, September 11th of 2013 in Buenos Aires, Argentina. He says, Christ is promising his second coming as the bright and morning star and as the son of righteousness. That is, first, he will be seen as a star and then as the sun. First, seen as a messenger and then as the son as the Messiah that has its process its time and many details are not given on that so no imitations will arise where the enemy can get in or send his wicked spirit to people and they get in to try to imitate now notice how first he is seen as a star, as a messenger, and then as the Son, as the Messiah. But that wasn't spoken before openly, so that this that he says here, that the enemy, where the enemy can get in or send his wicked spirit to people and get in to try to imitate because the devil is always been imitating that is what he did in the ages as the Reverend William Branham said then this is why he was told you will not say anything of what you've seen in the little room you will say nothing and he was forbidden to open or make known the mystery of the seventh seal. You will say nothing of it. That is how how it was. That is how it's going to be. Nothing will be said of what will be happening there. That will be open to the church of the Lord Jesus Christ at the last day. The thunders, the voice of Christ, will open it and will give the faith to be changed and taken with Christ to the marriage supper of the Lamb. There is where the faith lays to be changed and raptured, and that will only be had by the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Those that are going to be changed and taken with Christ to the marriage supper of the Lamb. In the message, who is this Melchizedek on page 27 he tells us just as a dewdrop dewdrop if I understand I do not know much about chemicals but it's got to be the freezing of humidity or atmosphere and when the night gets cold and dark it falls from the heaven and drops upon the ground. It fell from somewhere, but the next morning before the sun comes up, it's laying there, the little fellow, shivering. But just let the sun come up. Watch it go to shining. It's happy. Why? The sun is going to call it right back to where it come from. It, and that's the way with Christian. And that's the way with a Christian. And he writes, Dispensation of the Kingdom. Malachi 4.2 And further down, Revelation 10, 1 to 11. 
and 10 to 20 and 19, 11 to 21. We know when we walk into the presence of God, something in us tells us that we come from somewhere and we're going back again by that power that's pulling us. And he writes, the, the morning sun takes the dewdrop back to the place where it came from. And Malachi 4.1 to us. The little dewdrop, he's, he glisters and shines and shouts because he knows he come from up there and that sun is going to draw him back, right back up again. And a man, that's an attribute of God, born of God, knows hallelujah when he comes in contact with the son of God he is going to be drawn up from here someday that is the rapture for if I be lifted from the earth I'll draw all men unto me and he writes the son of God returns us back he goes on to say Therefore, God will put to work all that promised word, making it a reality, and in the midst of his church, and we will see this clearly in the fulfillment of the third pool, in the fulfillment or realization of the tenth vision. It is a promise, and it has to become a reality in the message which is the attraction on the mountain also tells us on page 20 of the book in Spanish quoting of Malachi 4 it says but to them that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise he shall rise with healing campaign and healing in his wings you shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. Now notice, and he writes there, campaigns of divine healing. All of that is what will be happening very soon, fully, in the full fulfillment of the tenth vision. Now, it corresponds to us to be prepared so that with the coming of the Son of Man with His angels we are returned through that light through that pillar of fire we are returned to the, where we came from to heaven toward the seventh dimension where the supper is ready for us the mystery of the coming of the Lord as the Son of Righteousness. Let us stand up. And we thus leave in this subject which there is much that we could read, but we will come up to here regarding of what the coming of the Lord is as the Son of Righteousness, which the part that pertains to us is the blessings. the mystery of the coming of the Lord as the Son of Righteousness. We leave immediately with us our appreciated brother, friend and brother, Dr. William Soto.